My name's Kim. I work at the Institute of Physics Publishing. My name's Ian and I, I work for IP Publishing here in Bristol. And today we'll be talking about why publishing is so important to the whole cycle of science. So the cycle of science is that somebody has an idea and they go away and test that idea and ideally they want everyone to find out what they learned. And then you write about it in an academic journal and then hopefully you spark an idea from somebody else. Essentially, publishing is about sharing your ideas and sharing your knowledge with a wider community. Publishing is also about taking the field forward. Science works by taking incremental steps and standing on the shoulders of giants. Journals are a permanent and transparent forum for the scrutiny and discussion of scientific research. Published work can not only make a difference to research but practice too. Having work published means that somebody's validated the work that you've done. It's been peer-reviewed, checked by experts and they agree with your conclusions. Not everything gets published, so it's a real stamp of quality to have your paper accepted for a journal. Peer review is a really important part in, in the life of any paper, and it means that others have, have checked your work and not only agree with the results, but they think they're important enough to be published and for others to read them. A journal is traditionally read by scholars or academics, but it's also sometimes read by teachers or practitioners too. Most articles are about experiments, telling us what they did and what they learned. But that doesn't have to be the only type of article that gets accepted. Some articles are written about new ways of teaching. You could write up a paper on an, even just an idea for an experiment. Review articles and knowledge articles are also really well received by our readers. So for academics, uh, publication is really important for them because they're judged on their publication records, so what and where they publish. Writing articles also demonstrates lots of different skills, for example being able to write clearly and concisely. It's quite a rare thing for a student to have done, so it'd look great on any university application. Research not communicated is research not done. You can do the best research in the world, but if you don't communicate it, uh, then no one will ever hear what you've done. Uh, there's lots of ways you can communicate your research. You might be communicating it to the public um, by doing a talk. You might be on the radio. You might be writing a, an article for the newspaper. You might be wanting to communicate things to other scientists, or you might be wanting to um, talk to children in schools. Writing papers is one of the main ways that scientists talk to other scientists about the work that they've done. Here are a few good examples of student projects that have made really good papers. So the students from Roskilde in Denmark worked with an academic from Oxford University to replicate the academic's work on a microscopic scale, blow it up and do a similar experiment on a macroscopic scale. The original academic paper which was published in Nature was looking at miniature water droplets bouncing on hydrophobic surfaces. What the students did was blow this up many thousands of times and studied water balloons bouncing off a bed of nails a really good example of a, a student project that, that made a fantastic paper it was a report from a student in Cambridge who worked with an academic from UCL to design and build an apparatus to detect cosmic ray muons. So when I was in sixth form, uh, at the beginning of year 12, I started uh, a project with um, a professor at Imperial. He kind of came into our school and kind of gave a talk and sort of talked about some of the research they were doing. And then uh, uh, I kind of started working on this project, he kind of gave us some data and sort of suggested some ideas. Uh, and basically over the course of the sixth form I kind of slowly um, kind of developed the idea. Um, the idea was kind of working out how uh, only using uh, X-ray emission lines you could work out the geometry of solar flares on other stars. Uh, so I kind of wrote that kind of alongside my A-levels over the course of sixth form and kind of uh, by the end of year 13 I had something that was kind of in a, in a state to be submitted uh, and they said Yes, this basically makes sense, but we've got the following list of changes for you. Uh, and then resubmitted that, and then after that they said, oh, yep, yeah, that's good. Your paper is now accepted. So then that uh, paper was published in their journal in their next issue, and other scientists around the world could kind of look at it and say, um, and see what, was good, what research we were doing. Um, and a few people have kind of cited it and found it interesting in the years since then. So uh, we did something interesting, hopefully. Um, I'm Mia, I go to Kampong Science and International Academy and we did a collaborative project with some students in Singapore and we measured the levels of radon gas in the area to try and see if there was a connection between altitude and the amount of alpha particles. I feel it's put me in a really good place because at school you don't get to experience real science or are exposed to how a research project is carried out and I think it was very good practice to see all the steps and the thorough measures you have to go to to produce something that can be credited and if I can talk about that in my personal statement honestly 
people are impressed and I'm really happy with how it went. I got to practice real life science and that's amazing and that's something that none of my friends have done. So I'm pretty lucky. You have a particular focus for your research and hopefully a passion for that research and then you want to articulate that, that with others and share it with others, to hopefully spark off interest with others. And I think it's particularly exciting if you're a school student because by and large you're writing for GCSE and you're writing for A-level and by definition that has constraints. And I think it's quite inspiring for people to be writing for audiences that are beyond teachers and beyond you know, examination boards and their requirements. The sorts of skills that our students have developed through working with ARIS are the sorts of skills that we didn't develop till we were sort of in our second or third year of university. Um, you know, understanding how peer review works, um, being able to reference properly, working collaboratively with other scientists, the way to approach other people to ask them what they've found, and um, all of those skills, to know those, to develop those before, before they go to university, and in some cases before they even reach A-level, um, it just eases the whole of the rest of the transition into university life. We do the EPQ in the sixth form here, the extended project quality qualification and in essence that's what that is it's a research paper they come up with a proposal a hypothesis and then they're allocated to supervisor and they go off on some research and they actually it's called an EPQ project but in essence it is a research paper and, and some of those although they're only actually in the sixth form would do really really well at university level. I think sometimes we make the mistake of underestimating young people. Uh, they're unfettered by the past if you like. I think there's a freshness of approach, I think there's an openness of, of approach and I think there's a sharpness to the inquiry minds that's to be celebrated. Okay, so you've decided you actually do want to write up and publish your study. What next? The first thing you need to think about is where you want to get published. What kind of journal should you approach? Things you'll need to think about include what audience the journal is written for and whether they cover the topic that you've been working on. So once you've found the right journal, have a look at it, have a look at the sort of papers that it's publishing. Familiarise yourself with the types of paper and the style of paper that they're publishing and read their guidelines. Writing for an academic journal can also be slightly different to writing a normal essay or other piece of schoolwork. The key things to remember are to be clear and concise. For more information, watch our next video about how to write for an academic audience.